here in my railroad apartment. Hey there, I'm Joe Iconis. And I'm Jennifer Ashley Tepper, and you are listening to Album Podcast. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about my song, Party Hat, a.k.a. I want to put a party hat on my cat. If you think you know and love this song and you just know everything about it, you're going to have several exciting surprises over the course of this episode. Um, What exactly is happening in this woman's apartment and where did the party hat come from and and who else might be in the building and and what were the potential parts of this song that never came to life lots of exciting easter eggs and what ifs in this episode there's more to mine and party hat than you might think and so we can't wait to have you listen and put on a party hat and make a meme <laughs> surround and play pretend I'm gonna wear a golden dress, make such a mess, and never let the good times end. Party hat. Um, so party hat is definitely like a, a favorite of many people. I feel like I see more online memes about online memes. Am I 80? I see more. <laughs> I see more memes. Is it about, GIF or GIF? <laughs> <laughs> I see more memes about this song than maybe any other. It's very memeable um yeah what inspired party hat start at the beginning okay so party hat is a song that i had the i had the hook of it in my my head for years and years and years and years and years and um and i i I, literally without any context for the song i had the line I'm going to put a party hat on my cat in my brain, like for years and years and years and years. Um, and I always felt like, oh, I should write a song, you know, based <laughs> based on those two lines that I have. And um, and originally there was another there was another two lines after that short ones that uh, or there was a completion of that thought, which was um, I'm going to put a party hat on my cat. And pretend I have a friend. That was like the the complete completion of the thought. Um, but I always preferred the the. I'm gonna put a party out on my cat uh, to the 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 finisher of that thought. Um, and so I tried a few times to write write the song. I never could. And then we were doing a concert at the Beachman in uh, in 2012, the summer of 2012. And I, um, I thought, oh, I want to, you know, I want to write a couple new tunes for this concert. And, um, and it was, I believe it was the concert that I first premiered, uh, fell in love in Juby Hall, uh, the AKA I was a teenage delinquent exclamation point and, um, slide whistle. I think we, we were all done at this concert. Um, but party hat, I knew I wanted to 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 do a duet. Uh, oh no, that's a lie. That's a lie. Um, I uh, I I I sat down to write it, and I wrote it. I don't know why I was on Long Island, but I was in my family's basement on Long Island, and that's where I wrote this tune um, on the same piano that I would later write uh, a good majority of the song album uh, just ten years earlier. And I uh, I started writing it, and. I um I came up with that first the first verse I came up with the setup and then the chorus and then I got to the part of the song where the woman stops singing so she sings the she comes up with the idea I'm going to put a party on my cat um then she gets excited about the idea um and uh, sings about her golden dress and 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 all that and French perfume and all that. Uh, and then I was kind of like, okay, I feel like this this has run its course. This person coming up with this idea to, oh, I know how I'll fix my problems. I'm gonna put a party hat on my cat, and it's gonna be so great. And it was kind of like, now what? And because I had mentioned the neighbors earlier in the song, because there's there's that line, you know, the neighbors will peek through their windows. I I was kind of like, oh, maybe maybe a neighbor will knock on her door and say, what's going on in there? And they'll strike up a conversation and 
uh, and, you know, she'll find this like human connection. And so I kept going down that path and it just kept feeling not correct. And it kept feeling like, oh, this is not really what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say like, if you're lonely and depressed, like all you need is, you know, is to find like romance and you'll be fixed. Um, and so it was it, it it wasn't working. And then I thought, oh, maybe maybe we should just hear from the cat and 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 get this whole situation from the cat's point of view. Uh, and as soon as I as soon as I like had that idea, as soon as I had the spark of that idea, it was just like, a, oh, yeah, that's what it is. It was like a fully formed thing. I think I wrote the rest of the song in like two seconds. It um, it immediately uh, you know, clicked into into place. And um, a as I was writing it, I had been thinking about M.K. Lawson, uh, who is an amazing actor, uh, choreographer, director, uh, and she was in uh, my musical Blood Song of Love. And I had been thinking about her when writing the character of the woman. And then as soon as I um, thought about this cat character, uh, Eric William Morris, uh, my frequent collaborator and great friend popped into mind and uh, I just finished it out thinking about the the two of them. And uh, yeah, that's like the nuts and bolts story of how it's, Party Hat came to be. It's funny to think about it in terms of Blood Song of Love, because, of course, you know, Eric, William Morris and M.K. Lawson were like romantic leads, for lack of a less um, reductive mm -hmm term <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, uh, yeah. yeah hero and heroine of that and these yeah. are just very different roles that you wrote them like you know shortly after that touch on totally different kinds of talents that you know they have as actors yeah for sure and you know so much of the song like i um you know because so many people know the song now the sort of like the surprise of it is gone but when i first wrote it it was i i loved the idea of when you know when Eric enters into the song, I think certainly at the first few performances, and and still sometimes when people don't know the song, everyone always assumes that that person when they speak is going to be a neighbor or is going to be, um, you know, some character uh, who is going to like save this woman. And so the 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 idea is that you know uh, just finish eating some friskies is the thing that lets you know that this is actually the cat and not some human being who's now entering the song. Mm -hmm. um, and and I think that because you know MK and Eric had sort of like just played. Uh, romantic leads to use your reductive term in, in a musical I think that was like kind of even even you know that that sort of expectation of this being a different type of song was even greater um, you know when it was first first premiered and that that idea that like you know sort of defying the expectation of what a song like this you, you know might normally be is something that like has 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 stayed with the song and all of its you know future uh iterations and performances mm -hmm. um do you ever imagine like an adaptation for the screen where like is someone is it a cgi cat is it like we're watching the andrew Lloyd weber movie is it like <laughs> like how does this get adapted to another media um, i've always wondered yeah i like whenever i whenever i think about it i think about i think about a real cat like i never think <laughs> about it i never think about it in like a whimsical way like i think that it's like a very <laughs> very sort of like naturalistic um you know interpretation of the thing like to me to me party hat is not like a cute song you know i think that a, a lot of times people sort of perceive it as as this like you know sort of like cutesy um uh you know like uh whimsical cartoony thing and, and and while it certainly has elements of that to me it's like a pretty it's it's kind of serious like to, to me it's I, i've always said i thought the song is about the things that we do for people that we love and i think that the relationship that the woman has with the cat is um it's it's really it's really uh meaningful i think it really is and i think that in the song you know the cat um while being you know kind of a kind of an asshole really recognizes how much this person needs needs him 
and um, and recognizes how how good this person is to him. You know, it really feels like a, a, a song that's about two people. Um, two creatures. A, two creatures. Yeah, two creatures. Um, fully, fully, fully recognizing what the other means to them. Um, and to me, I actually relate it really strongly to, you know, the songs or 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 musicals that I've written where it feels like the central relationship is a is a is a is a friendship or it's a it's a or it's a, you know, a, a non romantic love story. Right. So like I'm thinking about like, um, you know, uh, Jeremy and Michael and and be more chill and or like, you know, the musician and banana and blood song of love. I've written so many shows or, you know, Chris and John and black suits where it's like it feels like they are like love stories. It's just not a necessarily a romantic love story. And it's it's sort of like a friendship or something in between. Um, and uh, and it's this is one of those those songs to me. And, you know, whenever I whenever I work on the song, because people do, you know, sing it a lot in like master classes and things like that. I always talk about how I think that at the top of the song, I feel like the woman um, and also like the the gender of either either creature in the song is like, I think can, it, I think it could be anything. Um, I originally wrote it as like a woman and, and a cat who was like a, a, a cis male playing that cat. Um, so that's the terms that I'm using, but it can kind of be anything. Um, but in the in, in the song, I think the woman at the top, I think that she has sort of sort of racked up a whole bunch of um uh awful interactions with fellow humans at that point and i think that it's just one of those nights when like she just needed a win and she didn't get it and she's finding herself in a really really awful place and she's you know she's alone or she feels alone in her apartment and i think <clears throat> I think that it, she her night could go a whole bunch of different ways. And I think that when um, she says, so instead of feeling blue, I know just what I'll do. I actually don't think that she knows that she's going to put a party hat on her cat in that moment. I feel like the thing I feel like she could say 10 things after I know just what I'll do. And I think that like you know, one of them could involve harming herself in some way. I think one of them could involve harming someone else in some way. You know, I think that I, I, I think that there's a version where like the woman in Party Hat could could, you know, do what like Kevin does in the song Kevin. Um, I think there's like so many different things. And I think that like by some miracle, she just happens to lay eyes on her cat who's you know probably staring at her with like mild disdain and in like a split second she remembers that she has a party hat lying around and she's like oh i'm gonna do that and then i think that 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 you know the miracle is that she has that thought instead of other thoughts and then it sets off a a a, a series of events that i think gives her some 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 joy, which then leads to some hope. And I'd, I've always liked to think that um, that the woman's life turns around after the events of, of Party Hat. Um, when you said feels alone, it really opened up some possibilities and creeped me out a bit because I never thought that in the world of this song there was anyone else in the apartment. And now that you're talking about different possibilities, <laughs> I'm like, oh... I, I guess there could be other people in this woman's home. Um, also, uh, have you ever given any thought to like why she has the party hat, like where it came from or, you know, like this lonely woman, like a lonely woman, this lonely mm -hmm. woman like had a birthday party at her place, question mark. And that's where the party hat's from. What's what's the canon response to that? You know, I, I amazingly, I haven't really thought about it. And no one has ever, ever, ever asked me that ever <laughs> in the history of this song, which I have talked about more than other songs. Yeah. Um, I, I, you this know, this song really like, appeals to a lot of people, but especially cat lovers. I feel like a lot of people who have a cat really, you know, I understand why you get a lot of notes about this song. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do. I'm. So, oh yeah, I wonder where the party hat came from. You know, it's like I, I'm every. I immediately had three different, three different <laughs> ideas, and all of them are terribly, terribly sad. 
<laughs> not the obvious though. I don't think it's like a child who used to be there who's not there, but it's like I feel like either she um, you know, she was like she threw uh she like, you know, offered to throw a party for her nephew and then like nobody showed up. Mm-hmm. So she had all these party hats or she um she like worked at a nursery school and got fired. Mm-hmm. She took up the party hats home. Um, literally, as we're talking about this, my my cat is wanting to be fed and throwing things around the the kitchen. And I, I didn't her. know Diane Kitten could throw things. Really, I, yeah, I've she, seen her in the background. It's yeah, she uh, she can. She's gotten really good about knowing knowing how to escalate uh, levels of violence in order to be fed when I'm ignoring <laughs> her. Um, and you know, but something something else that people always ask me is that like they're always like, "Oh, is this song about Diane, my cat Diane Kitten?" But I wrote the song two years before uh, I got Diane. Wow! I wrote the song before Diane Kitten was even born. Um, but in in a lot of like you know artwork made by made by fans of the song and you know made by myself, Diane Kitten has sort of like become the the face of yes. party hat she's she's become the feline representation of party hat well you've also i mean you've had cats in your life prior to diane kitten it doesn't sound like maybe uh, a specific cat inspired the song but yeah no it was it was general but i i have had cats in my life my um my first cat that i had growing up was named spunky and was the um the the inspiration for my my aol email address <laughs> that followed me into my professional career uh, w- well into my professional career probably too far spunky you're, was my you're in good company with that i think we should have some kind of like there's so much to do a podcast just about theater people's aol names and earliest emails because i feel like that would be a, a great great concept i i think so too i'm doing i'm doing a run of concerts as i as we we film this um, or tape this this podcast, and so I'm like doing all these invites to people, and it always makes me so delighted when I email like a a titan of the theater, and their email address is like you know like no, yummy yeah. brunch at aol.com. <laughs> I always have to be very careful in this situation because more than once when having this conversation while hosting an event, I've been like, and isn't it so funny that so and so's email is and given out the email address of like uh, <laughs> this you've seen this happen. Um but it's because there are so many incredible theater legends especially who are like older who when they first got it were like I'll name my email after, you know, the song I'm known for or the show I'm known for and some of them are very fun. Um yeah. <laughs> party hat. Uh, before we finish party hat, um, we would be remiss to not mention the um, iconic dance that goes along with this song. Um, as performed by Lauren Marcus and Eric William Morris on the album, I can pretty much like see the dance in my head as the track is happening. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot of your songs that kind of have dances people know, but mostly it's because of like, you know, moves that a choreographer came up with in the musical version or something like that. And this is an iconic iconist and family song with its own Mm -hmm. kind of choreography um it really is and the choreography just kind of like naturally developed from the song (laughs) you know i think that um uh mk and eric were the first people ever to perform it and they they'd sort of naturally found themselves dancing uh in that first performance of the song and that impulse has only grown and morphed over time. And now I feel like, I mean, I feel like Eric and Lauren Marcus, um, their, you know, their sort of choreography is is uh fairly iconic. Um, and I feel like I learned I learned what a body roll was because of their performance of the song. I feel like I didn't know what the, the term body roll meant um before seeing them dance party hop. But um it, you know, there have been like really great uh you know dancers who have who have done the <laughs> done the song and i feel like they all bring their own spin to it you know i'm thinking of like seth elliser has been the cat quite a few times and he's such an amazing dancer and um and then actors who you know are not known for their dancing like jason switch williams or um uh or will Rowland. you know i feel like so many of the the people i i play with have have portrayed cat or woman at some point and um they all bring their own their own spin to it their own moves their um, own hot moves yeah should we end this episode by like taking a short break so you can feed your cat is that what the universe That's, wants that is literally what i'm i'm gonna do yeah she's she's uh just behind me 
and like and staring at me in the in the creepiest way. Listeners, I can confirm. I know you can't see, but I can <laughs> confirm. Yeah. You're welcome, Diane. It's all for you, Diane. Hey, thanks so much for listening or watching to my podcast. Uh, do me a favor and go to wherever you just listen to or watch this thing and subscribe or like or give us a great rating or review and then head to bpn.fm slash album to find out even more information about this podcast, more ways to watch, more ways to listen and check out my album, Album. Thanks so much for hanging out. Album Podcast is executive produced by Liz Armstrong. Produced by Dory Berenstein, Alan Seals, Kim Garris, and the rest of the team at the Broadway Podcast Network. Be sure to visit bpn.fm slash album for both audio and video versions of this podcast and to listen to album. Album.